So, okay. Knowledge. And I'll allow, I'll allow screen sharing here. So everything will be, whoops, and I don't want to share my screen. No. Nice Christmas tree, Chris. My gonna... wife does good work. <laughs> Very festive. <laughs> yes. Fits like a hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> Got some blue lights going over some mantle. Mantle. Oh, yes, I we see do. some lights there. Yeah. We do uh, several little, little trees around the house. Hi, Mrs. Zimmer. <laughs> Tammy. She comes over here with more rum balls. I hate to do it to you guys, but she's having me test her concoction. So really, you know, uh, excuse me, Bruce. Up. Bruce, I need to test some uh, wine here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that's how we play this game. Definitely time that we meet in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I better, I better show everybody. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> This is part of living with a chocolatier, you know, you just have to, you know, suffer. You have to, yeah, you have to have the test chocolates. Oh, the sacrifices you make. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm normally I don't eat a lot of sweets, so yeah, it's rare. He's a good tester. Well, since you're recording, we better get going. I was going to say, or you know, start over. Uh, so I set out the agenda. Did everybody get what I set out? Yes, so if you want to add anything, go ahead, I but... I just put some things at the bottom of the minutes. Um, uh, confirm minutes was one of them, but also I think um, just um, looking at the, I think we want to go ahead and have a date we shoot for for the for a um, public meeting for a town meeting. Okay. And. Um, So that was probably the the one I was thinking we want to make sure we do. Okay. Okay. Um, I was just trying to bring it up. Can somebody? Do you want me to start, and I can we can just look at because I just wanted to also confirm. Um, I can go ahead and share if we want to go ahead and do the. Uh, I spoke okay. to. Chris is um, I spoke to Alan. Uh, briefly the other day and I did not really talk to him about reordering the you know the survey um, you know having a concept of not having the survey first but actually doing a presentation um, mm -hmm. and so um, I just thought so let's see you should be able to see so here's my word doc is that reasonably um, yep zoomed in enough okay let's see how oh, i did really strongly suggest that everybody uh, look through at least this one chapter in the shoreline master um program handbook because mm -hmm. you know you're talking about uh, consistency of our terminology but also being familiar with um we got the the doc will have to co to comply with these guidelines and so i think we want to be reasonably conversant with them. Sorry, I see this lamp issue. And um, that we are comfortable with them and that we speak, you know, basically the same language uh, when we are talking about the elements of the doc. Yeah, Elaine, I, I looked through that. That was very good. And uh, I also saw that you've already taken some snippets from that and put it in your presentation, which I thought was excellent as well. So, mm -hmm. well, you know, I think that that probably part of what we have struggled a little bit was when when we took the um, kind of the guidance from Terry Terry about you know being well prepared. I think most of us kind of thought about more like the design end, and then we all woke up and said, "Well, we can't well, we can recommend some things." But obviously, we are not engineers; we can't really um, propose literal design documents or you know engineering drawings or something but it struck me that what we certainly should all be able to do is speak to what are the basically the mandates that we will need to comply with and that will certainly inform 
any of our recommendations and how we help educate the rest of the islanders about why some of these recommendations we're making aren't just personal preference, but they are ones we need to, mm -hmm. to so, deal with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Let's see. Um, we did, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about that, the, the notion of, of polling, how we get some more impact statements from the public before we go to the county. But we all also agree that we didn't want to confound the notion of the survey about what would you like in a dog with what are the problems you have with ferry outages. So right now, I'll tell you the truth. I, I personally would probably say, let's go ahead and make the statement, you know, the, the case at the, the uh, public meeting that for us to go to the county with the greatest impact statement, we need more you know, validation. And that's going to come in the form of, of people sharing what, what they've experienced. Yeah. And I am hoping that we can put a article in the January Tom. Mm -hmm. um, and get that get that going but if we want to have that meeting before january i guess we need to have um start running the poll stuff and i haven't i've, I've been giving alan some space his mom died yeah he said and i don't know if you guys know knew that but he just he he just was asking for a little bit of personal space so I haven't followed up with him to do to work together to come up with the poll questions. I I think he's he's feeling better. He was he was also feeling sick, and then his mom died, and it's just that's that's a toughie. Mm. So yeah, so I think um, a part of the. I just want to confirm and we're the same exact people this week as we were last week when we said mm -hmm. we will want well to we're missing nick oh you're exactly right but we don't but but there's no one here tonight who did not was not in on the discussion about us saying mm -hmm. listen you know like dave said it just makes a lot of sense to wait and or to to reorder our our tasks so I just kind of spelled them out in the minutes. I wanted you guys to read through that and made sure that made sense. And I personally would have said we would not be ready to have a meeting until January with the public. It will take a lot of preparation on our part. I mean, even if the, even if the, the presentation were ready today, the getting ready for the meeting itself will take mm -hmm. a lot of, I think a lot of rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And I think we need plenty of time to prepare for that. And I don't think it makes time to uh, sense to try to get it done in the middle of the holidays anyway. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't know about you guys, but I've got some children coming this week. <gasps> Good. Week. I'm going to be a little bit defocused. I hope <laughs> so. Focused on like what Chris has behind it, the Christmas tree. <laughs> yes, which now has turned into a tiara. Yeah. This is we're rocking this whole thing. <laughs> I feel like I mean maybe I should drape the bamboo lights over my head <laughs> too. Um, well, so if you guys can just read through those six state, you know, steps and make sure there's Nick um, that you feel like that will make sense for us. Yeah, I think yeah, please do like during the holidays we can continue to make good progress on the uh, the presentation development, right? Um, mm -hmm. and get that much closer towards a, a meeting. Uh, Chris, I know you said you had hoped to get something to Parks and Rec by the end of January. Uh, is there, there's no particular hard deadline, right, to meet? Uh, no, like, that was just trying to set some sort of target, you know, and I understand with holidays, it's just that's not going to happen. You know, no, I, I just want to make sure we weren't missing some kind of grant filing deadline or something like that. So, nope. nope. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Hey, Nick. Hi, Nick. Hey, uh... Hi, Nick. Did I miss anything good? Uh, no, we're just starting to go through the yeah. meeting minutes. Yeah, we just want to make sure. I have nothing that... to contribute to the meeting minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I want to just make sure that um, the statements I put in the minutes make sense for uh, how we think we want to proceed. And because the minutes do become public basically once on the website i just want everyone to look at that and say okay that flow makes sense and if i were an islander who has not participated in these discussions i would look at at this and not be um i don't know horrified or, or shocked or i think we were kind of off way off base um, and also, we were just saying, Nick, because there's people who have not, who had been active before, but people like um, Alan right now are a little bit out of pocket, and we wanted to make sure we were real clear about this was a, a change of direction from what we had talked about before, and make sure it was clear why, and that everybody still had a week to think about it. It still seemed like a good idea. Mary, when does the January tome come out? Um, it'll come out the, it's usually the, the deadline is the Friday of the second week of January. Okay. And then the tome usually comes out the following week. So the third week of January, um, usually it's mailed out on Wednesday or Thursday. So it's, it, it's by it, it's in everybody's hands by the third Thursday or Friday of January. Third. Thursday. Yeah, so that's kind of out there. So uh, it is. Mm -hmm. like if we wanted to do a meeting in early January, I mm -hmm. don't know how we would publicize this the best. But if we could let people know that we're planning to do that, that would get them thinking in their minds, give them some heads up that. Oh, I got to start thinking about this. I'd like to, you know, learn more. And um, so, I don't know what would what would be the other avenue to publicize. Other avenue to publicize would be um, publicize it in Brown Betty, publicize it on Nextdoor, and publicize it on the Leica website. Okay. And maybe we could even put um, flyers up. I you know, I don't mind trying to make a flyer and putting it up at the Islander, on the ferry, at the library, at the post office. Um, uh, I think they also put them up um, at the, there's a, a box by the ferry dock. So. Oh, the um, uh, announcement. Uh, Panel. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing could be, um, you know, in the past for things we've actually went out and walked the ferry line at rush hour and handed out flyers to people, handed, handed, we've handed out surveys to people. Um, I don't know if you'd want to be doing that in January. <laughs> But I remember during the during the ferry crisis, uh, when they were trying to get the lease 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 negotiated with the tribe, and they were trying to get people to attend like the PLIC meetings and stuff like that to try to do the initial organizing on the island. That you know we we. We walked ferry lines on both the Gooseberry Point side when people were coming back to the island and on the island side when commuters were leaving the island. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, the, sounds and the deadline for the tome is this second second Friday of of the month. So if we had a meeting prior to that, then we could put a summary in the tone, right? Yes. Might, might be nice. Good mm -hmm. point. 
And then because we know we would be having the poll afterwards, we could make sure people knew how to get uh, to the poll, how to find mm -hmm. uh, the presentations, how to play the Zoom, because we'll be yeah. doing the session. Yeah, um, and yeah. Um, it, we could also, uh, other things that we've done, we have, um, I have in the past before asked to uh, speak at a Grange meeting. Yeah. And also you can ask to get on the program at the, at the Leica meeting. Uh, Leica meeting is like the fourth the fourth Wednesday of the month. Range meeting, I think, is the third Wednesday of the month. I'm not positive on that. No, I think range meeting is the first Wednesday of the month. But sometimes, you know, if you have something, you can ask to go, ask to be invited to their meeting. Um, So, anybody else have ideas? I think you covered it all, Mary. That's those are all things I would be thinking same same way, same mm -hmm. venue. That's a good way yeah. to get the word out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know who else has in person. I'm not sure if the church services have in person uh, meetings right now, um, or who else. Historic Trust, they're, they're probably all, are they all soon? Heritage Trust, um, they're, they, they don't have like, they're planning just, they're staying virtual for their annual meeting. Um, Life FAC is trying to, they've applied for a LICA grant to uh, use the Grange Hall for, in-person meetings, but I don't think that the grant will be, um, the grant money usually isn't available until February. So I, I don't know how that's going to work this year. But we could still do that, even if it's that, that three minute before the meeting mm -hmm. that can, can mm -hmm. talk about it. Yes. So looking at the calendar, if uh, you said the second week, the second Friday of the month is the tone deadline, Mary? Yes. That would be January 14th. Yes. If we targeted some kind of meeting on that early that week, maybe the 11th or 12th, uh, that gives us about a month to get this presentation wrestled into submission. Can we do that? <laughs> um, and I, I just, just knowing other schedules. I know that like as board meeting is the second Tuesday of the month. Mm. And the life act meeting is the third Wednesday of the month in the evening. So I would recommend missing those days. So you might be looking at scheduling on a Monday night or a Thursday night. Maybe mo Monday the 10th. That gives the rest a few days before the tone to write up something. Okay. Um, two, four. That gives us four weeks, including Christmas. So uh, so yeah, effectively it uh, limits us. I think I, in my mind, I don't think I think that's great ambition, Dave. But I, <laughs> I know that I've I've got stuff. It's yeah. just going to be taking me away more and more. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, let's yeah. Let, let's let's see how we get tonight. How far we get? Let's let's do that and okay. keep on pressing on, and we'll just do it as quickly as we can. But got to be right, right? Yeah, yes. no, I agree. I I wasn't necessarily, I just, I was just trying to, I was trying to target that tome deadline and maybe that's not realistic. So, because that's not a lot of time. <laughs> but, no, but uh, that might be a good time to um, 
advertise a meeting in early February. Yeah, yeah. there we go. There yep. we go. Okay. Yeah, and the other other meetings that are there, LIFAC and LICA, that would be a good opportunity to tell them too, hey, we're ready to give a presentation now in early yes, February. Get on mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's shoot for that. I think that's doable. And and maybe use the LICA, LIFAC uh, meetings to kind of polish up before a public meeting. Is that what we're saying? And get more feedback? Sure, you could probably do that. <laughs> I don't know, just a thought, right? Okay. Well, I hope it's not on a Thursday night just because I've got training at the fire hall those nights. So that would be very difficult for me to make. So that's oh, I, I forgot that one, Chris. I knew that there was a, a, a bad thing for Thursdays, and that's it. Thank you. Yeah. So I think I think Monday night is the night to shoot for. I don't know who meets on Monday night. <laughs> well, well, again, Sunday nights, I think, is still a, a mm -hmm. possibility. Most people are, you know, getting ready for the work week. So, mm -hmm. but that's really kind of the only two nights I think that we have available anyway. So, mm -hmm. oh, a Saturday night too could possibly work. Oh, mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So, Okay, so I got those updated. Okay, cool. So I think the next thing, if everything's okay within minutes, I think was what we had talking about Life Act, and was it um, in the fire fire department meeting? Yeah. So I'll stop sharing. Yeah. So okay. uh, did anybody watch the Life Act recording? Mary, I you watched did? it. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. So you, you heard the latest and bottom line is this, the ferry funding did not come in. The target date for we've got to get this done is now at a minimum moved out to 20, was it 29, Mary? That is, yeah, that's, that, that's what Richie believed or, or Charles Bailey believed that that was the, the drop dead date because they were talking about the engines needing to be replaced with hmm. engines that would be that would meet current um epa standards correct and yeah so that's why they had um yeah so yeah so, it's, so on that basis that puts out the possibility of the dock work as well much further mm -hmm. out than what we were hoping for and mm -hmm. Even that, they're not even done with permitting process for doing the dock work anyways. So he made it clear that they're a long ways away from that part of it. So it could be longer than 2029 before we have any type of an emergency accessible dock that small boats could use at all. Mm -hmm. uh, yet he did emphasize that they definitely have that in their mind. They are including that in the new structure somehow, some way. So they're definitely working on that. It's just that the timeline now is, is that much more important for us to try a different route because it's going to take longer on their end. So uh, that was the, the bottom line for the Life Act meeting in my mind. We, it's just that much more imperative that we push hard for something. Uh, and then as to the fire department uh, commissioners, I've sent them a second letter and they have it on the agenda for this Tuesday night. Oh, so I can't share an update on what they're going to say, but I know that I've pushed now in two letters. It's all documented and they are going to address it this Tuesday night. I will be filling them in if they don't know what LIFAC said about the farther out the drop dead date and encouraging them to move on this sooner than later uh it, it's my hope that they're gonna uh take this earnestly and run with it we'll see you know i don't have any control over it other than i'm gonna plead with them to do something so that's the update i wanted to give on those two items uh, chris what exactly were you asking of the fire department i'm asking the commissioners as elected officials 
to go to the county council, the only power that can instruct public works to do a project and fund it, mm -hmm. to request that they not hesitate to get an emergency accessible dock installed on the current uh, dock systems on both our side and the other side I see. Uh, that are deployable by the battalion chief, the fire chief, or one of the captains of the ferry vessel at the time, if we need it. That will answer at least part of our dilemma now. So when Jim and Mary come down, we'll have a way to get them onto my boat or somebody else's boat in a safe, organized manner and not trying to walk down those rocks. So basically it's getting elected officials to talk to elected officials who have the power to actually make something happen because everything else is a waste of time and effort when we pursue people that can't actually make something happen. And so in my understanding, we've got fire commissioners that are elected. They have the power to go to the county council and say, hey, we really need this. And I'm hoping that's the oomph that we're gonna need. We'll see. Okay. And that is the, uh, would that be for uh, boaters other than licensed captains? Is that what you're pushing for? It, I, I don't know the details of that other than if they're going to leave it up to the fire chief, if they're going to leave it up to the battalion chief at the time, if they're going to leave it up to the captain of the ferry vessel when to deploy this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I hauled passengers by proclamation from the fire chief. Okay, hey, you are a firefighter, you're hauling them as a firefighter, even though it's your personal boat. So we, it's already a precedent. We've already done it, needed to. Oh, okay. And so we know it can happen. The exact details of that, that's, they don't care what we think. So it's really a moot point. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. And I don't mean that in a bad way. For anybody who's watching this, I'm never down on the county officials or anybody. It's just, I, it's, it's, I know that's the structuring you guys have to deal with. So I'm not down on any of you. I, I feel sorry for you that you've got to jump through all these hoops, but that's just the reality of it. Yeah, and we've just, you know, we've, we have heard that, you know, from Richie that, it, it, it's, it just can't, you know, the county doesn't want to take on any extra liability. And, and, and so using their dock puts, puts, puts them, I guess, at more liability. So I don't know, that's, you know, those are the, those are some of the assumptions that we're operating under. Hmm. Thus, getting the powers that be to move on our behalf. It's our only only hope. Anybody else have anything new? Anything to add? Um, yeah, just one more thing on the Life Act. Um, they will be applying for another raise grant mm -hmm. next year as well. And there are also, uh, there still is the, the CRAB money, which is County Road Administration Board, um, which is a uh, Washington state program that they are hoping to get some money and funding by. So it, it, the ferry is not dead or anything until 2029, um, but so there, the county is still going to be working diligently to find some kind of funding. And the one thing that they also emphasized at the meeting, um, Roland Middleton from Public Works was on the call. And he said that as far as infrastructure for the county, the ferry is their number one priority at this point in time. He, he emphasized that several times um during that during that meeting I, I i remember that chris do you remember that too he was yeah. just saying yeah. that it is their number one priority hmm. 
Well, I don't envy their their hoops they have to jump through trying to get these things. What a tremendous amount of work and then to be turned down and wow, I just mm -hmm. I don't know how, they, how they do it. All right, well, let's move on then to the next uh, agenda item, continuing to flush out our steps. Okay. Lane is so quick, she's bringing everything up. Let me get out of my uh, Word and get over to PowerPoint. And it's so funny. I'll Honestly, be right I thought, back. Thought I was. Um, I'm not sure. I was typing away. I thought you. I thought I was sharing my screen earlier, but I might not have been. There we go. Okay. You know, sometimes it pops. I, I told I told the pop up to go away so that I can see my silly screen, and now I can't tell. Can you guys see my PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you make it a little bit bigger? I can. I will. Nope. Well, nope. I'm, nope. That's um, blowing out the. It's blowing <laughs> yeah. out from the I'm, sides. I'm, to, I'm making the screen and the screen itself big. I yeah. You, yeah. That's that's what would be better. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so probably. There we go. That should uh, let me undo my mic. Better? Yes. Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. So let's see. We were, well, you saw that after our talk last week, I re, I re chunked it. So let me just step through. Um, the way I changed the background uh, uh, on this project, for example, I kept the, the getting started part, but I changed the, the getter done basically just to focus not on the forming the committee, but on the, okay, now the committee is formed and what, what has, is the committee doing? And I thought if we framed it in the context of these questions to address, then we have these five topic areas to mm -hmm. cover for the presentation. Does that seem to make sense to people? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, so having done that then, went ahead and then talk about the committee and then go into uh, the goals. So like we were saying last week, just straight up, we're looking to, to establish a public doc. That's what the committee is after. Looking at it, we just said, here's the solution we see. And then just to kind of a summary, and, and we repeat these a couple of other times in the presentation, which I think is fine. The, the benefits you do want to, you know, sort of hammer on. Hey, uh, Lane. Yes. On this one, I think it would be good. Uh, once again, we've talked about it and it's easy to forget, but, but uh, maybe some statement of providing over the water access for non boaters you know uh, and i know i think we i think you talked about that later but oh i see yeah so so uh, opportunities for recreational boating but also um uh expand i'll, I'll reword this later mm -hmm. dot 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 for um access or something for uh access to waterfront activities or yeah yeah and you had some nice, I looked through this earlier, you had some nice graphics there showing families crabbing and stuff, what have you. Mm -hmm. I think it, at least in this one for goals of the overall project, just to try and expand it beyond just, hey, here's a bunch of boaters that want to have a dog. That's so, a good point, exactly. Uh, yeah. You really want to expand the uh, waterfront park. Uh, yes. For, for everyone. So. Yeah, and maybe not even expand, but enhance. And, yeah. yeah. Yep. Right now, yes. Because it's pretty limited right now. And I a very I think parks and recreation might agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I would say not even community, I would say enhance public access. It's public. I can never quite determine when to use which. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. 
I mean, Alan had a great one a while back that I never would have considered, and that was uh, like radio control boats, right? Oh, right, <laughs> that, right. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, here you go. There it is. There is it. So that was, um, yeah. I forgot about that one. Yes, radio control boats. Okay. Yeah, very nice. And airplanes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I was seaplanes. <laughs> I've got a couple seaplanes. Yeah. All right. Are is that but... a radio? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I was thinking not drone. Radio no, control. I despise that term. <laughs> vehicles, vessels, radio controlled vehicles. Yeah. There you go. Vehicles. Oh, whatever. I'll, I'll look up or hobbies. They must. Yeah, radio controlled hobbies. There you go, something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll look up what they, they say about themselves. Okay, that's cool. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, it's a little bit of a limiting one, but I did notice in, and I forget why I came across it, next door, I guess, was saying that the Santa boat can't come here because we don't have a public dock. Mm -hmm. so. Access for Santa. See? <laughs> I think that's worth throwing in. I mean, that is an island. I personally okay. thought so. Okay, we have to have our meeting before Christmas then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see if we'll come back to the goals. All right, there we go. I love go. Those, uh, those little graphics and bullets, so they, and that's great. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I was trying, you know, you, you try to, for one, honestly, sometimes a graphic, then you don't have to try to come up with a lot of good words about it. You can, right. and, and our intent is not to, I think, that's what I was realizing. It was more, I don't want to call them teasers, but more reminding people about what, you know, imagine yourself here kind of thing instead of just the words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one thing <laughs> I'll just throw it out there now because yeah. there's a lot of material here. Um, there's a lot of slides. And uh, I think what we'll have to, we'll have to figure out what we want to do to pare it down for a meeting presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Versus like a submission to Parks and Recreation. Exactly. So maybe the more photographic stuff, the better. I, I don't know. Uh, Timing. And the nice thing about the nice thing about slides with just the graphics is you just show it and you have don't have much to say about it. Um, yeah. And that's but I have been using the notes pages because that helps us. That's almost more like a script. Yeah. Think about what right. we're talking about. Um, yeah, I found that if you have a lot of slides and then you start cutting, you know, as you organize them, then you can kind of, you know, combine the high points on two, you know, to, and, 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 and then throw in the other stuff as part of the script. Yep. Because there's nothing worse about PowerPoint than someone reading to you a bunch of slides. Yes. <laughs> PowerPoint, death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I rule, you estimate three minutes per slide. That's a lot of time. You know, so. Um, so it's so funny, as a trainer, I would have only said a minute. Yeah, minute. Uh, but you get questions, you get, you know, so. Well, I, I'm going to tell you this straight up. I, I believe that part of the reason we need to rehearse this really carefully, I think we're going to have to have someone who is a dedicated moderator. Right. And I think you're going to have to ask for people to submit questions like uh, via the chat. And that's going to have to be very carefully moderated. Mm. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. I think that otherwise I'm, I'm very concerned it would just go off the rails and you wouldn't. Yeah. It's so hard. Once you've had a question asked, it's super hard mm -hmm. uh, to, to reel people back in. Um, but if you can explain and you can have and consider questions after a section. But my concern is always, you know, we're about to talk about that. You know, we're going to talk about that. And I don't want to get derailed right now. Mm -hmm. So sometimes That's the nice thing about Zoom, we can mute everybody until we want them to be heard. That's right. <laughs> And because yeah. it's recorded, you know, you know, people can can replay it, um, but it's uh, the management of the discussion will certainly be a big aspect of the 
Yeah, we could go into webinar mode and in webinar mode, you can just uh, uh, turn off everybody's video except right. for the presenters mm -hmm. and, uh, and keep people from doing any commenting mm -hmm. except for doing uh, entering in questions in chat, and then after you finish the presentation, then your moderator can read the questions that have come in in chat, and uh, they can be answered. Exactly. And if you had a really critical thing that somebody totally misunderstood, the moderator mm -hmm. is the one who let's say say that Dave's doing this this section, and you just say, you know, Dave. I just want to address one thing that maybe is not clear to people, you know, mm -hmm. boom. So you don't have it like, uh oh, that was that that we need to address <laughs> versus, you know, maybe at the end of a section. I see we've got a lot of questions about this. We'll be really excited to, to discuss this at the end so that you kind of let people know. Yeah. Yeah, And I've seen one technique I've seen in, in webinars I've attended is, you know, the moderator will pose. They'll present some of the questions that came into the chat answer those and then say, okay, well, we're out of time. We'll answer the others on our website or email. We'll you bet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that, that person is also the one who realizes really these three questions are mm -hmm. in essence the same question, but mm -hmm. so maybe we can address it um, instead of three people ask the question at the end of it, you're like, oh, you know, that was the same question three times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So everybody attend webinars the next month so we get other, other good ideas. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. So then the, the scope and terms we talked about just straight up front immediately. This is not a marina. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I kind of, sometimes I put placeholders here because I honestly don't know what we should talk about here or, and sometimes because I, I don't think we have the details yet. And this is kind of a combination. Mm -hmm. Not really sure. Um, I think you, this is a, a little challenge to keep it short and sweet. But again, make sure it doesn't derail into a, you know, people think this is a marina. Yeah, I think this is key because it, you know, I think it addresses a lot of questions people might have. But this is like a county dock, you know, you can stay a couple hours, maybe a few hours that can be discussed. No overnight hanging out. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A few boats, we'll figure those details later. Of course, that'll come from the design as well. Uh, I yeah, think and I realize we'll, we'll show some examples of other islands in a in, uh, later section uh, for those people who are trying to envision. I'm afraid, again, if we said, oh, like such and such here, all of a sudden it would be like, no, no, that's a, for some reason, that's on somebody's hate. I have a hate on for that, <laughs> <laughs> for that dog. <laughs> so, I think it's just to make sure people have the sort of short story before we go on. Mary, real quickly, when you shared that document last week, I I didn't see, is that part of Google Doc or was that a separate doc that Alan put up for you? Um, I did it as a Google Doc, I believe, and I, I don't think, and I thought I had sent it to Alan to put on the website, but maybe he Is that didn't. The one you're talking about the 16 docs around the islands? No, it was the one that Mary shared last week. Yeah. yeah. Dave that had the, she said, uh, you know, I realized there's just, she was thinking about the survey and she said, here's, here's key points. She showed it on her computer, but. Yeah, I, let me, oh, I can't. Yeah, let me let me see if I've got it. Um, keep on cruising. I'm I'm okay. I'm listening. Okay, okay. And then the other thing I realized we just wanted to um, get the 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 emergency versus urgent. Mm -hmm. Say we're not trying to replace emergency services. We have emergency services, but I thought. I wasn't sure how much information we wanted to cover here at this point, but I realized maybe in terms of setting the stage, we wanted to have- Yeah, I think those points are key. The, the, the ones in your notes down there, yeah. 
Um, so we'll just think about whether, you know, how much, we'll see if there's another section in the presentation that we would build additional or that would complement this or if this becomes the, the key. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always a little concerned in an intro section that you want to mm -hmm. kind of get to through it. It serves a good purpose, but you don't want to spend too long on it. So yeah, maybe this could come later and after the concept is demonstrated. Right? Could be. Because I be. think you had some slides at the end that kind of reiterated this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, but but I think the material is key. We can figure out where to put it, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe I don't know. Maybe some of it gets condensed. I don't know. <laughs> but I know under emergency access scenarios, some of the wording that we might want to include in that would be things such as. Uh, um, present fire boats. I, I'm just throwing this out. It's not the words to uh -huh. use, but basically uh -huh. there's fire boats that exist now that uh -huh. have no uh, place to land on Lummi Island to easily get patients on and off of. Right. So this would provide a layer of, you know, however you want to say it. This is the shortest possible route between the island and the mainland via any of the current fire boats, either out of uh, Sandy Point or Bellingham. Mm. Okay, so for uh, for emergency response, because you know, Alan mentioned to me that this is also true. I didn't realize that there is, in addition to the um, air ambulance, there's also boat ambulance that we don't no. have a place to land. No, no, there there are two fire boats, one available out of Sandy Point and one available out of Bellingham, but both of those are a minimum of about 40 minutes from getting to the island with no place to land, to load and unload. Right. And so under emergency access scenarios, you know, response is covered only in that we have resources we can bring in yes. to help people, but we have no quick way of loading them and unloading them in a safe manner. This mm -hmm. dock will provide that layer that we do not have currently at all. So okay. Okay. even though we can call these guys in, they're they're in a worse position than I am with my private boat of mm -hmm. trying to get somebody off the island, right? Because they can't yeah. land on the beach like I do. Mm -hmm. They need a dock, so it'll definitely I provide see. emergency access where nothing else does. So I think I put a little bit more about this under public safety as one of the benefits. Okay. But I think I think to summarize the urgent access, it would still be a use case for that. So that's what we have to decide how much of it we say here in our just set the stage, saying we just want to make sure that you understand we, when we say urgent, here's what we mean. Um, mm -hmm. And then later we get to the public safety benefits. We could say, remember we talked about you know, urgent access. Well, in terms of public safety, here's another use case for urgent access. Yeah, because we really, the only, real emergency access we have is the ferry mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's the only real true one that we have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i guess that there is some kind of an agreement that they can use the dock at scenic estates to go in there with the fire boat if the dock is set up yeah under urgent access scenarios, uh -huh. change vehicles to vessels. Vessels, mm -hmm. vessels. Um, where have I got? Um... I'm trying to point at the screen for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bottom it's, line, it's, it's the bottom <laughs> bullet point. Uh, okay. Where, hang on. Uh, uh, here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking in the notes pages. I was looking through these. Okay. Great. Got it. Of a vessel, yes, okay. Vessel vehicles. Vessels, yes. Vessicles. <laughs> we go. want a sub boat here about Bellingham and Sandy Point, because Chris, I didn't know there was a boat at Sandy Point. That's actually good to know. Uh, yeah. And I think in a in a in an urgent situation, um, Lummi 
let me the let me the Lummies have a uh, have an emergency boat too. I've seen it's it's their police boat. Oh, okay. We have no coordination with. You don't have any kind of a joint operating agreement with them. Okay. No, you know I'm sure if we called they would, but mm -hmm. it just, there's no standing agreement that I'm aware of because we've never okay. claimed with them. We've never talked about them. It's not on my call list. It's not in my battalion phone. So okay. I'm totally unfamiliar with them at all being involved. But yeah. good to, and I think but part of, for one, I mean, we may find out that maybe we're able to, to change that. But one thing I've been trying to do is where people say, oh, we have all these other resources. Sometimes it's something like this. Yeah, that, that resource exists, but, and I think that's what we become the clearinghouse for understanding which resources exist and could be used which resources could exist, but can only be used under these conditions and which resources exist and we should do a better job maybe of uh, reeling them in. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's great. So, but, but right now we have two fire boats, one at Bellingham and one uh, at Sandy Point. Yeah, and I did find that document. Okay, great. Could it be that we don't have an agreement with Lummi Nation for the access to their police boat because we don't have a dock? Right. I mean, if we had a right, it could just right, point. we could perhaps, you know, enter in an agreement with them. Just I will I will inquire of the, the chief on that matter and see if there is any standing agreement that we have. I've never heard of it, so I, I really doubt it. But let me let me investigate that a little bit more. And again, it's been my experience. Anytime that I've contacted the tribe for anything, you know, they always go out of their way to help and mm -hmm. including in mm -hmm. those situations when I've talked to them they came out and pulled me over one day because they couldn't figure out what I was doing they were super curious I was moving a 2700 pound anchor uh, into position and I was towing it very slowly and they were really curious about what I was up to but they were great to work with yeah they're really they're really good I've you know listened on the radio uh, just while I was out teaching classes and have heard them responding to things, mm -hmm. um, you know, just talking with the Coasties and, you know, and like, and I know Coasties have fast boats and so does Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Lummi Nation definitely seems to get there faster than anybody else, though, for sure. They really do. Yeah, yeah they and they're awesome. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, okay. So these were the these were the two though when we we talked about it's a dock non marina and then the difference between emergency and urgent. I, I thought were the two maybe and again we might come back and see that there's some others. But if you just think of within the first you know seven minutes of the presentation, you want to clarify these things. So do we want to try to flesh in some of those things right now? Like not life threatening, but important and give some. Um, I've, 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 the ones I've captured so far are down here. Can you see the notes pages? Okay, yeah, okay. Yep, I'm so seeing this see, now. I, I think I captured them because when, we, uh, when we've talked before. So I think maybe for right now, what we might do is I'm thinking kind of flow. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, good, okay. Yeah. And then um, we'll, uh, as, as we talk, when people throw out ideas, I'll go ahead and type them in. But- Yeah, you know, I saw it said that. committee, the committee should make a clear set of non-medical use cases justifying the urgent access. Yes, yes. So, so some of those we discussed previously, but if people can think about that. Um, okay. So if again, you imagine, so we are, in terms of, uh, of slides, it is a lot of slides. I, I tend, as, as a trainer, I tend to make sure I want to say, okay, here is what we're talking about right now. You know, the uh, tell you what I'm going to tell you, tell you what I am supposed to tell you, and then tell you what I told you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trainer. So some of the break, the, the, you have nothing, don't have to talk about much, but these break slides give us a chance also to say, okay, here is the reason we're, you know, this is what this section is about. It's a brief background, but it's also setting the stage. Mm -hmm. So if we get through to, we got the goals set out, the, the, the terms, the critical terms. Um, I, don't, I don't really know if, if this goes here, the next steps, um, if we just want to 
if we really need this here and it might just go at the end. I think it had a, it was a placeholder to confirm kind of where we were with the fact that we will be getting more public input before we go to counties to parks and rec. Mm -hmm. Like we would say like, okay, you know, what we're going to do now, now that you know what we're doing, we're uh -huh. going to have a survey. We're going to have, you know, two weeks or, or 10 days to get this survey. Here's the survey. We have giving you 10 days to get back to us. Bloody da, something like that. Yeah. It's something that says we're not just running off and making mm -hmm. decisions. Yeah. So, um, do we need some kind of maybe it's an email or website based, but a public comment section, you know, period. Mm -hmm. Could be, that. yes. Um, and tell you the truth, the other one was gather input about uh, Islander experience with fairy outages. Mm -hmm. We want more of that before we go to the county. So, yeah, so we'll come sometimes, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll look at this for a while. Oftentimes I do look at it in this view, this, this kind of layout view, because it's very easy to move things around. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll notice I also gave you um, the, it's the, the outline view on the left. Mm -hmm. You suddenly go, wait, 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 where are we in this discussion? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's on the back one. Sense? Does it still make sense? So now we would transition, if everybody thinks that makes sense, so we have these sort of 10 get started slides to address the first question. Um, and I, I do this kind of uh, keeping, keeping honest, we, we said we we're gonna address five questions, now we're gonna start addressing five questions. And the first mm -hmm. question is, what's the current situation? Current so, situation, there is no doc. <laughs> Why is that a problem, Mary? <laughs> Hey, you can so, show a picture of the uh, waterfront access. <laughs> what was yeah. that? <laughs> Are we the only island in the archipelagos that does not have a public dock? That is not a true statement. Mm. Okay. What other islands do not have them? Uh, Cyprus. Um, let's see. Some of the smaller ones, but they do have, uh, Eliza does not have a dock. Hmm. Um, so could we summarize it in no I island with any type of population? Hmm. Would well, that be more accurate? There's islands that have populations less than ours that have public docks. Hmm. Um, uh, Guamus doesn't really have a public dock. They have their ferry dock. Hmm. But I don't think they have a separate uh, public dock for rest boaters. Okay. I, I, I'm, I, I've never seen one and I've circumnavigated Guamus before. Mm -hmm. I know Eli Eliza doesn't. And there's quite a few people who have homes on Eliza. Okay. Sinclair um, doesn't have one either, does it? Well, it Sinclair wants one. Did. It did have one. I mean, Sinclair it did. Yeah. And it was destroyed. And what they're using now are is that they're doing the landing craft um, oh. that I sent the info to. I think that's who is servicing Sinclair on a regular basis. Okay. Um. So simply put, like you said, then Mary, we're an island. We need a dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it yeah. is stunning. Now I know it's not in in Whatcom County, but uh, I noticed that um, uh, in San Juan County that one of these islands it has fourteen. Okay, one four, one four residences has a public dock with moorage for you know like twelve boats. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's. It is a very, very high proportion of people to, to dock, I thought. And so, well, anyway, not necessarily because it, 
that it is probably also an island that is not served by a ferry. And, you know, so the people on that island have come together as a community and built a an alternative way for them to get to their homes and back. But I mean, it's a community dog. Mm -hmm. It's a public dog. It's the yeah. county. county paid for it. So admittedly, the county might say, well, if we weren't paying for your ferry, we would pay for 900 slips, but I'm kind of guessing. <laughs> So what would you guys, any, any, anybody want to toss out a guess at how many residents we have <laughs> without making, having this be a big meltdown point? I think about 950 oh, is what they're I saying thought, now. Yeah. I don't know where Paul came up with his number, but it was a little bit higher than I ever heard. Yeah, that was a, um, but he, he was talking about subscribers, not residents, wasn't he? Well, I don't no, know. I don't like oh, did yeah. he get it's I, about he get 950 right now, I think. That's what I've read. Okay, and, and I think we, um, residents or residences, I don't know if we should just say, if we leave it at residences, is that right? Is it 950? Well, that's, that's the full time residence. Okay. So we'll, we'll, I mean, no matter what number we put here, everyone's going to have a meltdown, I'm afraid, because it's and, a point of No, and, and it, during the summer, our, our, the number of people that are residing on the island goes way up. Yep. Close sometimes to 2,000. Yep. Uh, going back to what I said earlier, I would find out, I just confirmed with the chief that we have no agreement with Lummi Nation for any okay. type of assistance from them. Okay, okay. thanks, Chris. <laughs> okay, but it's something to consider, because I do think that those are all these resources that, that this committee can help maybe you know, leverage so that we, we just make most use of the resources we do. have. Yeah. Um, and I have those figures, the Y number of ferry trips in miles in 2020. Um, uh, Rich provided that number during the um, Life Act meeting. Yes. Last I month. I, I didn't look. And it up. I, I need to pull it out of there. I can yeah. pull that out. And. And the years the Whatcom Chief has been in service, I believe, since 1962. Oh, I thought it was built in 1965. No? I believe she's been in since 1962. Okay, so we'll, we'll look at that. But yeah, check that. Okay. And then anybody know, do we know the number of days in 2021 with an unplanned outage? Or number of times it happened? Well, the, the time, it, to me, days is more relevant than the number of times. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the number of outages, period, because a planned outage is also oh, an yeah. outage. Okay, you're right. You're right. That doesn't, that's, that's silly because you still have an urgent need to get off the island, whether it was planned or not. I mean, our focus is on unplanned, but the reality yeah, is the, the, the difference in a planned outage and an unplanned is I believe that if there was an emergency, and Chris could probably verify this, but if there was an emergency on a planned outage day and the ferry could still run, they would probably fire it up and get somebody across. Hmm. Hmm. That, yeah, yeah, as long as the type of outage allows that, as long as the ferry is still operable and the docks are still operable, yes. Okay, they would. that's kind of what I would assume. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we'll say approximately, but I, I just seemed... Um, we I, want I to take the time to do a public uh, information request. Yeah. Right, we can uh, we can do that. It would be worth doing, I think. I know for sure. <laughs> I know for sure when four of them were. <laughs> yeah. So, and I and I had the impression, you know, twenty twenty one has been a a tough year, but it doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean it's a a singular, you know. Yeah. No. And and that. <sighs> 
and I don't know if we want to, I guess we would include weather. I, I, I don't think it's fair to include the weather related oh, outage. Non, yeah, and I put a note there. I would say not, no, um, a non weather related. Because when the ferry doesn't run for weather related reasons, it that is oh, like public no safety. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's to protect the vessel and to protect um, lives. Sure, and your boat couldn't go anyway. If it's bad enough, the ferry's not going. You're not going to be out there with your, mm -mm. you know, your little landing craft. I think the point of this slide, right, is that we're on an island. We have a lot of residents. We have an aging ferry. We've had a lot of outages in 2021. We can expect more in the future, and we don't have any public dock access, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if the number of ferry trips and all that, that's an interesting statistic, but. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, that's it, more wear and tear on the. Uh, on the ferry, which is a good point. Uh, I'm just trying to. The brevity here is yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maintain yeah. that we can. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so interesting point. Yes. Yeah. So you can always, and you can always have a version of the, well, you hate to have multiple versions of the presentation. I'll hang on to that just briefly in case we suddenly realize later we want to include it. Um, that might be uh, more useful in the pitch to the county or the uh, parks and rec. Oh, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Interesting point. Yeah. Yeah. And you can still, you could put a little graph here, even without mm -hmm. having all these numbers. Let me think about that. That's a, that's a great idea. I yeah. Think. Okay. Um, Blaine. You know what? I, <laughs> uh, was it Chris that mentioned a, a public information records or something? Uh -huh. We had a graph of outages over time. Well, that might be very interesting. Uh, I mean, I could just show an, you know, <laughs> a progressive increase. Uh, huh. The other thing that even Rich Hudson mentioned in a prior Life Act meeting is, hey, even with a brand new ferry, there are going to be issues. Oh, yes. exactly. Uh, I wonder if there's any public information about, you know, early new ferry reliability issues, something like that. Maybe we could dig for that. Uh, although, again, I don't know that it's that important. I think this sends the message home. One thing that was said at the Life Act meeting was that um, it was brought up that it would be really good to keep the Watkin chief Resident. available um, for at least the first year of service for yeah. the new ferry so that the bugs could get worked out. <laughs> that is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the realities I thought it would flow to then give some high level uh, impacts. Again, you're right. This is this is not for Islanders so much as it is for the county. But we could tell the county. I mean, to tell Islanders. For us to give some quantitative data here, we have to have it from you. Yeah. So I mean, we can we can show a lot of people are impacted, but exactly in what ways, or uh, you know, more compelling stories. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I also think that we also need to talk about impacts of the planned outages. You know, because dry dock is a planned outage. There are financial impacts with dry dock, with people that for security reasons rent parking spaces on the other side. That is not a cheap proposition. Mm -hmm. You know, so there, there are, you know, it, the ferry outages do have big impacts. You know, uh, businesses on the island have to adjust 
you know, it, it's more expensive, expensive for the businesses on the island. Um, you know, that there's all kinds of other things, you know, so I, I think it's planned and unplanned. That's definitely going to provide a good way to get supplies and goods on and off island during even even the uh, foot passenger ferry time. It's going to mm -hmm. offer, you know, to lessen the burden on on all levels. Mm -hmm. You have a good. Good dock and good pier. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe get uh, somebody offers to bring Brandon back and forth. My golly, the production he goes through to get the, those things on and off the ferry every morning. Mm -hmm. And if it's big enough, like the one out at Waldron, you know, you drive your pickup all the way out to the end of the the dock, and you know, all you got to do is get the stuff from the the lower floating dock up up the ramp, and boom, it's right in the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. Did you just expand the scope, Chris? Um, it's no, not at all. I mean, that's more than doable with a, with with a, <laughs> with a dock like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting point. Actually. But again, that would be the parks department, you know, yeah. decision. But you know, it'd be nice to have it big enough that it, it would be be nice to get the ambulance down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'd still have to go down a ramp. But boy, if we could back right up within you know eight ten feet of the ramp down to mm -hmm. the floating dock what a tremendous benefit that would be. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually, Ooh. you want to make sure you capture that link. That I, had yeah, not I have to say that, that in terms of scope, I think right now I have like a six foot wide, um, I mean, just throwing out some numbers there. Uh, what, if I'm, because what I'm thinking about is from the current, that platform to get out from the existing platform all the way down uh, to the water. Um, I don't see, think I've seen any, uh, except for flat out linear, like off of a beach almost. Um, those, any that had started with a high rise and therefore had to have a bunch of changes of elevation. Trying mm -hmm. to think of a vehicle driving down to that, I think it would be super challenging. Well, but it's, appear, it. it's basically going to be at the level of that existing platform and would go out from there at that height. Mm -hmm. would I would have. You'd want to keep the pier nice and tall because of storms and such and that would have to be at that height period and mm -hmm. then just like just like the original ferry dock if you look at the pictures of the original ferry dock yes it, the pier is way up out of the water right that's right mm -hmm. only, only the ramp to, at the yeah. end that gets you down to the floating area down close right right so if the uh, interest that, that was pointed out in your i'm sorry lane i forgot what mm -hmm. the document was mm -hmm. called but that whole waterfront pier access document <laughs> that a higher pier was better for the fish life because it's more light getting through and all yeah. of that so maybe there's good reason to you know there's multiple reasons to have this tall pier and if it can support a vehicle great so chris that was on waldron you say that they have this yeah yeah okay also stewart has it too okay um, the public dock on Stewart is tall enough that like a big giant fishing boat can come in and tie up there as well as, you know, so it can tie up to the pier and offload supplies and stuff like that. And um, uh, there's a picture somewhere um, that I found of the dock on Stewart that's got, that you can see, you know, a, a large vessel tied up uh, that has like a, a crane thing that's offloading supplies onto the, onto the pier. Mm -hmm. I'll say Mary, look for, look for that picture. I, I've got some pictures of Stuart, but they were not, not that kind, they were more the, just the pedestrian size. Yeah, I, I can. That's, that is interesting because um, we were having this discussion. We had friends visit us visit last week, and she said, how on earth do people build houses here? And I, frankly, I just burst out laughing. I said, well, <laughs> no idea. I said, I know there's such a thing as a barge can bring supplies over, but where would they go? 
do people do that? I mean, for do we, do we have folks who get supplies over while you're on a bar? I think it all comes across on the ferry. Right? Yeah, well, here it's mostly on the right? ferry, but other islands, uh, they do it on the barge. Mm, okay. Yeah. You might think that would, yeah. Okay. To think about. I'm not sure if you start talking about, I mean, in a way that's commercial traffic, is, is that a problem for a community dock? Depending on the size of the dock, it, it can be. I mean, I just wonder, like in funding, do you say you want that or do you avoid? Well, I, I offhand, I don't know. We could look into it, but I think we want to stick to our message of we're looking for a recreational dock, right? Yeah. And for small boat access, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm... I think if we start talking commercial, there's, well, even in that document you mentioned, Lane, uh, mm -hmm. I think there were other requirements plus i think some of the grant funding is different i, I, I was guessing yeah and yeah I'm not, i don't really have a lot of experience with that <laughs> but just, just a little bit of viewing that i did so we want to be cautious i think yeah because i have to admit when i'm thinking recreation i'm coming up with in fact i even have a picture where i they i'm showing some uh a couple of Quite a few boats rafted up and i honestly i think as islanders i don't know that people would be too thrilled to see to show you real quick um just it's just like a a lot of uh so see the pictures i'm thinking of are more like this chris that's what i meant by uh, the idea of a vehicle hmm. uh it'd be a long yeah way. yeah oh, yeah that'd be, may be difficult in that size but yeah now all i mean even so there's Olga with his just coming straight out from the from the beach. Sure. But um, and that might be what they decide is only they can do. And it you know, would just be on the wish list for emergency use. Yeah. If, if we could get it down yeah. there, that'd be great. If not, hey, I'll be happy with what we just saw. <laughs> yeah. So now I can't find it, of course, but I had a slide of um, uh, some uh, like I say, rafting up, which I, I just don't think would be a big sell um, for this community to have like 12 boats tied up to the dock. <laughs> okay, let's see here. So, oh, and then um, as I was trying to think again, flow here was to say, you know, the public feedback and priorities were uh, key factors driving the project. Mm -hmm. It's just a big placeholder. Um, uh, but uh, again, more the county than the islanders necessarily, but tell islanders we need to have from you your priorities in order to go to the county. Um, and then this was the, the, you know, we used to have a dock. And uh, so, and then from there, I think the the researching, so we didn't just jump into the, okay, we, we have to have a dock and, and everyone go, oh, well, we have this, we have that, or we have this. So this was, I wasn't really sure how how important this becomes. I think we're gonna maybe come back and, and review this. My, my personal take was that um, this, well, this was a point where a new ferry will not solve all the problems. Um, <laughs> You know, the weather's going to be weather. We can't solve that with a public dock, but um, we did try to look, we surveyed around the island and tried to find other places that made sense or I mean, other um, existing facilities that made sense and we couldn't find anything. It's the most viable location. Yeah, it makes most sense compared to anything else on island. So I Public think hotel. when I have a bunch of italics here, it means I'm thinking about this and maybe we should decide whether we need this at all or if, if so, where, um, or it, it, it's just kind of a placeholder for thoughts on. Um, yeah, I think one, one thing that would be good to capture here, Lane, is, you know, 
uh, you're talking about alternatives and there was a whole bunch of buzz about Aston, right? Some people thought- Yes, Aston, yep. Right? Now, yep. There's, there's gonna be accommodations for landing craft, but that's limited, right? Yep. So I think, you know, that would help clarify in the public meeting uh, why this proposal is needed, I think. Right? Yes, and that's kind of funny. I seem to not have uh alternative docs yes Eastern. Hmm. Okay. so yeah uh I, we have a whole right i mean we've done some write-up about it haven't we yeah, is that I that. Like Google doc, but mm -hmm. uh, this is one that people seem to certainly mention to me oh but you know ace is going to have mm -hmm. uh, have all will not that. have a doc no we won't have a doc right. and and it's only so yes yeah, so we um when we get to the alternate doc sites we want to definitely spell that out mm -hmm. so it could be that we won't need um this in the end we'll have addressed it but it was one of my random thoughts i didn't want to lose so sure. it's not random but a, a relevant thought but i'm not necessarily in this place okay so now we've wrapped up and that was about 10 slides answering the question about, you know, what is the current situation and why is it a problem? And then the next section is the proposed benefits and features. And this is about 10. Isn't that funny? I didn't do this on purpose, but there's about 10 slides per section. <laughs> um, and here, I, again, when we talked last week, I think these were more spread out. And so I was trying to group them maybe more effectively. So, and the first one, of course, being the public safety. Um, and this is where, uh, when Alan brought up the air ambulance and I'll probably move or copy that paragraph about alternate emergency response vessels. And I, I think on the first line, uh, getting rid of unplanned just during ferry outage. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would just say quick, something about, yeah, so. Rapid? Yeah, rapid, rapidly deployed or something. Ah, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Chris, I don't. Were you were you part of that discussion? I don't know if it was last week or in one of our subcommittee discussions where we talked about, uh, uh, you know, the idea that. Some of the floats would be removed and stored, but ideally, if we could raise one float out of the water, but it's deployable. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. I think you were there, right? Because then you could, if it yeah. was twenty something feet long, you could bring the uh, passenger ferry over. And yeah. to me, that would be um, that would be a key feature to kind of link support from the county uh, because. That reduces their burden when there's a need for, uh, a, you know, a short-term need for the passenger ferry. You know, oh, yeah. It would save them a ton of money. Yeah, yeah. And they have to send a whole team out and take several hours to install the floats. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, that, that, <laughs> that was my view on it. I don't, you, you've had conversations with the county, so uh, it seemed like that would be a good uh, kind of cross-connection. To this proposal, I, parks and rec. Yeah, I, I agree, Dave. I would think that you know interagency are going to work better together mm -hmm. than would public and uh, citizenry. Yeah, work together because there's <laughs> definitely a disconnect there that they can't do for legal reasons, which you know we understand. Right, right. But I think that that's a good selling point, you know, for going public, Doc. Um, is that because then perhaps even the county would be willing to provide a couple of those existing floats that they already have now um, hmm. to be part of our of our public dock facilities, hmm. you know, because because the, if they don't need them, 
those would become county surplus. Mm -hmm. You know, the like the ones that they have now for the for the pa for the passenger ferry. Yeah, that we load and unload on. Uh huh. Yeah. So. Yeah, they can either be sitting on shore doing nothing or being attached to the county dock or the public dock. <laughs> and when they need them, they just haul them across. <laughs> I don't know. It's, a, it's an interesting thought. Let me, um, I moved some stuff around here, some this note. Um, I was just looking for a floating sites. Details closest to shore. I, I, after a lot of, when I started using a lot of copy, loading dock, I just want to see where we put the, um, it's probably under recommendations for. Um, here, floating dock raised. Okay, there it is. Okay. So the, what I was trying to do is kind of say this was the, in, in this particular case, these are, this is a safety, this is a safety benefit um, and then a safety feature. So how would you satisfy that or how would you build it so that it met that, uh, provided that benefit? So if we're looking for these public safety benefits, then we're looking for these safety features not climbing over steep riprap being you know, desirable. So this section on benefits and features was kind of a high level. And then the functional, the actual design suggestions, the recommendations were the floating um, dock and having it deployed, uh, able to be deployed even off season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's our public safety. Here's our desirable safety features. And then the recreation benefits. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of features, so we get those benefits. And then we were talking here is where we would probably build, uh, have another slide with some of these other activities, waterside activities. Mm -hmm. So it's almost eight o'clock. Let me just go through and we just kind of finish. Let's see if you guys can uh, look um, uh, through this the environmental benefits then. Um, and this is where the, that shoreline plan comes in. Um, and then those environmental features. Yeah, I think this is great. Oh, and no, we are not, you know, this is not engineering drawings. This is just right. saying, you know, right. Our research suggests. And I love that you got Department of Ecology up there. <laughs> they're the ones who have the whole eelgrass or the ones who have the whole, yeah. you know, this is what you yeah. have to comply with. And they did this study about for the fish that with that deep shade under the dock, mm -hmm. um, the fish will avoid that. And so by putting the light, uh, light, um, uh, penetrating surface, then it doesn't disrupt the fish. Um, you know, as a diver, I do find that odd because every time I dive under a dock, uh -huh. there's a there's ton tons of fish. <laughs> that, you know, a lot of pile That's birds. so counterintuitive to everything I've ever experienced. I'm just like, I don't know where you guys get your studies, but whatever. <laughs> right. So whatever. And, and it could be that I'm wrong and that it wasn't that they didn't like to do it, but it, it did change their behavior enough that then and it could have been to do a spawning or something, you know. It um, does. It does impact. They have done studies, and it does impact um, eelgrass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because um, eelgrass is it. It grows in really shallow water, and it requires more sunlight than kelp does because it doesn't have the ability to reach up. And the eelgrass, if it's shade, if it's shaded, eelgrass can't doesn't live under under peers very well at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, there's 
there's a lot of barnacles and stuff growing on the pilings and that attracts the fish because they'll come and eat the stuff mm -hmm. off the piling. So, but I agree with you, Chris, I've seen a lot of life under there. <laughs> So in this, so this section is proposed benefits and features. I, I don't know. I think I'm struggling with where to put the site criteria, uh, alternate dock sites considered, uh, proposed site, where to put this set of slides. So we think about that. Read through it yourselves and just kind of move it around in your head and see what you think works. And then I did add this, um, most of my husband brought this up, was, you know, because he, he was like, you know, if you were at, down at Granger, then you'd be, you know, south of the ferry dock, south of a lot of the traffic, south, you know, not, not coming across the ferry. They said, how are they going to feel about a lot of traffic coming across the ferry uh, route? So I thought we should probably address this somehow, talk to the county and make sure there's no, like, they don't think they have a big zone of encroachment or you know is it a lot of signage we have to we just don't we don't want a lot of recreational boats cutting right across in front of the ferry put it that way hail well, passage is made that in north of the ferry and that reduces the possibility of of traffic interfering if they're coming from gooseberry point obviously it won't change anybody that's coming from bellingham Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, it, it does limit it from the Gooseberry Point side, you know, because it's north of the ferry. Oh, so you feel like that is, it is better to have it? There's less traffic north? Well, it wouldn't have to cross. If you're going to go from Grangers to Gooseberry Point, you have to cross the ferry lane. If you're going from, point. if you're going from the, 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 the public park, the beach access to the Gooseberry Point, you do not cross the ferry lane. Oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't, I don't see it that way. So, uh, okay, I'll go look at it again. But in any case, we still, I think, need to make sure that we're not blindsided in the middle of a presentation with somebody who says, well, isn't that going to be a problem with ferry? Uh, yeah, and the other thing I would bring up is the parking issue. Where are they going to park? Well, we have this beautiful parking lot that's taken up by a 90-foot, very expensive ramp. Just sitting there. <laughs> You're right. There's plenty of parking spots there for any additional folks that <laughs> want to take a piece of the park. Um, yeah. It was kind of funny. I said, well, look, they have it right next to the, the ferry. And Bruce was looking. He said, okay, this ferry is like, I don't know, eight times bigger than the Whatcom Chief. I'm pretty sure both of them are the widest. <laughs> and you know what? The, there are docks next to ferry docks. Like you have the entire port of Friday Harbor Marina yeah. right next to the ferry dock in Friday Harbor. Okay. Um, and yeah. The ferries going in and out of there have to honk at idiot boaters who do not respect right of way rules or or even no right of way rules mm -hmm. um, and or or just are are are, are too um, hung up about putting their fenders out and getting their dock lines ready to realize that you've got a Washington State Hello. ferry coming up on yeah. your butt. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen it already just being on the ferry and watching boats racing to cut across yeah. and and right now the, the the chief has to sometimes give five honks to mm -hmm. people coming up hail passage back and forth because that's a, yeah. a, a a way out of bellingham it's an easy way to get up into the northeastern parts of the san juans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but I think we want to have a statement ready where we've said, you know, we've considered this um, we, and look at maybe some of these other fairy ones and find out if there's any, if there's a, um, <laughs> I say signage. I, now I tell people, well, we're going to have, you know, 30 foot by 20 foot <laughs> um, billboards in the middle. <laughs> mm -hmm. That'll be attractive. We're, everyone's going to be really excited about that. Um, but I think we should probably have some comment that we've, you know, 
talk to life back and see, you know, is there, uh, does this concern you? You know, are you at all worried about whether this would increase traffic right around the ferry terminal? Okay, another exciting Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's time. Yeah. Thank you all for the great work. We've made progress again. Same yeah. that time next week. Yep. And I'll send this off to send the recording off to Alan. Thank you. Get it up on the website. Nick, did you have anything else? Oh, nope. I'm still working on my model. And uh I, I think I got some good homework for um, uh, today, tonight's meeting. I'm going to look into uh, some of the operating rules around ferries, see if there's anything posted for Washington State. I don't think there is. I think there's guidelines. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it sounds good. I think we're making good progress. I'm going to also go through some more of these slides and see if uh, there's anything that can be amended or adjusted um but so far i think we're making good progress nick one thing you might think about when you're doing your layout is that document that link i sorry i can't remember the waterfront <laughs> you know uh environmental impact whatever the, the document is they they talked about because of the shadowing and the light that it's preferential to have the dot or the pier in a north south kind of attitude or as best you can yeah what's it it is the it's the shoreline we'll look at the, oh it's actually in the in the minutes isn't it it's the shoreline um management plan management project yeah. SMB September 12th, uh about docks piers and uh-huh um it's in the minutes yeah, Shoreline Master Program Handbook. Um, okay. And then Chapter 12 is Piers, Docks, and Overwater Structures. Um, but that's okay. a good idea. Yeah, so all of us kind of reading through that and seeing if there's any other guidelines or considerations that would be good for us to make sure we are at least address. Now, if, even if it says well, we, we see that that would be a desirable design, but just wouldn't work out, at least that we realized it was a... a um, yeah. Reference, but it was considered, you know, if maybe we show up here, right. guts out and angles northerly or something because we attempted to meet this requirement. Obviously, it's going to be designed and engineered, but right, it just, yeah, maybe helps support our case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Hey, these guys did their homework. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I like it. All well, right. Well, wonderful. I should have something ready for next week. Excellent. Okay. Well, enjoy your time in California, Mary. I am. I am really enjoying being with my family. It's been great. Wonderful. So thank you. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. Okay, all right. guys. Take care. Yes, Good night. Good night, all.